Hello and how are you? My name is Mahindo Mbak and I'll come into our 14th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system that is web-based, uh, also with a mobile application. In our today's lecture, we're going to proceed uh, from where we stopped at and then uh, we see how it can do what we can do more things. And uh, today we are going to mainly start creating the API. So if you still remember yesterday in the previous lecture, we started at the point where we had finished at least mastering all our tables and also mastering part of what of the dashboard. And I show you how you can proceed with it. So today we're going to see how we can create the API and also being able to get started with what with our mobile application and we see how we can connect the two. So with that much said, uh, we always do 40 minutes and our time has started. So let's go straight to our today's business. So this is our system. I've already, I've already put it in our heart in um, Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to run it so it can start running, okay? So I'll go ahead and open my terminal and run php at run serve. So by running php at run serve, the system will start running on this what on this port. And if you can click on it, I can see our system is there up and running. So today we're going to proceed from there, okay? By start creating the API and also seeing how we can make use, how we can integrate now the API with our what with the mobile application. Okay, so what is the API? Uh, if it's new to you, the API is um, an interface that is going to work between our application that is on the server, which is at the heart of the system, and all with what? With other external applications. So let's say that you want maybe to collect data from the mobile apps, we want to collect data from maybe the front end of uh, maybe uh, React. We want to collect data maybe from the Internet of Things such as vehicles. So from any other source, we want application to be compatible with them. So it need that to, it will mean that we shall need what you call an API. So an API will enable application to work with what with other external external what external sources. So today we are going to begin by creating that API. We see how we can log in someone, also maybe how we can someone can submit the information and then receive it in our what in our API. So with that much said, let's go ahead and begin. Okay. So uh, to create an API, uh, you may need some applications, some somewhat some some system to test it. Okay. Uh, some application to test it. Uh, so to test the API, we always use uh, to test our API, we always use uh, uh, Postman. So with Postman, you'll be able to test your endpoints and see if they are working properly or if they are not working properly. So I'm going to begin by creating just a very simple API that anyone can do what can be able to use. All right. So let's begin. So at beginning, well, you're going to maybe you may need to create a what come here and download and install what you call Postman. So this Postman is a software that will help you to test your endpoints. So also if you're, if you're doing what, if you're developing with more than uh, one person on the project, also this Postman will also help you uh, to be able to contribute and put all your things together and someone can know how you have done what, how you've done some endpoints, so how, you've, how the, the, the data that is expected on what, on endpoints. So go ahead and search for uh, download Postman and then you'll see the first search results. So go ahead and download and install Postman. It is very simple to download Postman and the straightforward. It is simple and straightforward to download Postman. So with that much said, for me, I already have Postman in my system, in my laptop, in my computer. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open the Postman. So I'll go ahead and click here and write Postman, and there it is. So this Postman is done that I'm going to do what? Uh, to use to create our API as also as well as doing what? As well as the sharing 
with other people who may need to do that contribute to API. So uh, first things first. So this is how you, you open Postman, you create an account, you log in. So creating an account is simple and logging in is simple and straightforward. Okay, so now once you have Postman, so this Postman does its things in form of what? In form of collections. So a collection is like a particular project that you're working with. So if you have more than one project, you can put them in a what? In uh, different uh, collections. So the first collection that I'm going to do, I mean, I'm going to create a, a one collection for what? For our project. So after I've logged in, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a, a collection for our project. So let me close all the tabs here. I'll just simply click on plus here and get a new what? A blank collection. Okay, so this collection, I'll give it a name by just double clicking here or I click and say rename. So this collection, I can call it Inveto Track, the name of our project. Okay, so after creating this collection, so the first thing that we're going to begin with, we're going to begin with uh, creating the, maybe the registration. Um, uh creating the um, the registration okay should we begin the, um yeah i think we should begin with creating the registration and also after the registration we should work now with the login so let us begin with the with the registration after registration uh we go ahead and uh, do what and um, create the login okay so let's begin let us begin so we begin here by creating our registration. So this is uh, our what our, our our collection where we're going to be putting our endpoints. Okay. So let us begin with our what with our very first uh, folder. So we're going to create we, in this collection can put many folders. Okay. According just like the way we had our different modules. So likewise here you can put different folders. So I'm going to create a folder of authentication. The folder that is going to be responsible for what for authentication so right click here and say new folder add folder and i'm going to call this one authentication okay authentication so that will be the folder responsible for logging in updating your account etc that's going to be the folder responsible for that all right so with that much said okay the next thing that we're going to do now is uh, to create the what uh the registration endpoint so i just simply click here and say uh when you click on that address uh, add request this will be now your first request that i'm going to put to test something so our first request is going to be for the registration so this is just a name so we have not put there a link where this registration should be pinged so with that said uh let us go ahead and uh, create now the registration endpoint that we where someone will submit the information and we go ahead and do it and register uh the person All right so let's go ahead and do that so the first thing we shall i mean what, what should I do after doing this uh we're going to go back now to our application this application uh so i'm going to close everything Okay, so our endpoint, I mean our API endpoints are going to be in what we call the API route. So you come here to routes, you'll find two files, two main files. One file is called web.php. That is the one that you're going to, that you will use for what? For web purposes. And then this one is called api.php. So this api.php is where we're going to put our what? Our different kinds of endpoint. So the first kind of endpoint, I mean the first endpoint that I'm going to put is the registration endpoint. So to create the registration endpoint, uh, I'll just simply come here on top. For example, I'll come here on top. I'm going to show you just a very simple creating API. Maybe in the next uh, sessions, I mean the next top in the next tutorials, I'll now teach you how you can create an, uh, a very secure and protected API with tokens. For now, I'm going to just show you something simple that is not going to do it to confuse you all right so here we're going to begin the registration so to create the registration you just simply say route so this route is uh, how you start with creating a, 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 a registration route i mean a route any kind of route and then you put like this and then you say it is post 
So when you're expecting data, it is better that we receive this data using what? Using POST because POST is much more uh, secure. And when we shall be sending data, we're going to be sending data using what? Using GET. So we are in this API, okay? So I'm going to say POST. And then after putting POST, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put the what? The name of the, I mean, we put the method. So the method is going to be POST, okay? Route and then POST. So after doing that, so we open bracket and then put here. The first thing that we put is the name of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the endpoint. So I can put maybe authentication something like auth and then say uh, register. Or you can even put register if that's what you want. And then after here, you put a function that is going to re to do what uh, to work with the registration. Or we are going to do the registration logic. So you can just simply write here like function and then you open bracket. And then you open a curl bracket after here, and then here you put the logic that you're going to do in registration. Okay, so for example, here I can die and say time to register just for testing. So it means that someone, if they come to this and say if they, someone sends post to this method, I mean to this endpoint, uh, we shall be able to do what to register. I mean, we shall be able to access this, this function, or we shall be able to execute this function. All right, I think we are still together. Okay, so now let's see how we can access this endpoint. So to access this endpoint, so we come back to our postman. We want now to send some data here and you see if we, it will be able to reach this. So what you're going to do, you shall come back here to postman and here on our registration, um, under authentication registration, what? On registration uh, request. Uh, what you're going to do, we're going to put there the link that will send the registration request. So, after uh, when we finish serving our project, of course, our project is on what? On this endpoint, okay? According to my laptop. But your laptop can have a different what? A different endpoint, okay? So, after putting the main endpoint or the main route for your, for your, for your laptop or for your computer, the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to put the word API. So this API is done that you make sure that it is pointing in a what? In the API file, this one here. So you have to put the word API, and then you put stroke, and then after putting stroke, then you put the endpoint that you want to access. So our endpoint is auth stroke register. So you can just put here auth stroke register as well. As well, you can use, you can leave the word auth if you want to. Okay, so auth stroke register, that is going to be our what? Our endpoint, I mean our API. So if I send now, if I send, uh, you will see that I'm getting an error and this error is called method not allowed. So here, the method that I'm using to send to this one is not allowed. So the method that is allowed here, you can see here we're using the method of get. So the method is allowed here, we are allowing only post. So it means that you have to do what to change this one from get and put it to post. So post that is when you're submitting data to what to your project. Now, if I send, now I'll be able to see that I'm getting the response as time to register. That is uh, so beautiful, okay? That is so beautiful that shows that our in, that our system has successfully uh, connected. Now, so before we proceed, there are a few things that I want to show you. So this uh, endpoint, okay? The endpoint with the word, I mean this API up to the word API, here up to here, Almost you're going to repeat this endpoint everywhere, 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 everywhere. So, but it also it means that at really it can change depending on the, the platform that you're using or depending on some reason, this endpoint can change. So, since it's going to be a variable that you may need to repeat everywhere, so it will be a smart move to put this variable somewhere. So we'll be calling it other than keep on repeating our what? Ourselves. So... If you want to do that, uh, then that introduced us to the concept of environments. So environments, uh, as it sounds, it is the environment <laughs> that allows you to put your variables in one place and then you keep on calling them. So let's say that you're using maybe the, you're testing now the online version. You may just need to create the, the, the variables of the online environment I mean, on the, uh, with the, of the online link and also the, the what, the, the token and also the user and then put them in one, in one, what? In one environment. So when you change, you just change only one time. 
so i'm going to create an environment where i'm going to put my some of my constants things that i may need to repeat myself so i'm going to put them there and they'll be there so i just be calling them as variables okay so we're going to create our environment for inverter track or when we are testing on the local machine okay so let's go ahead and do that so to create the and we put there our constants things like this one things like the base url this one is not going to change so it will be smart if we do that we put it in one place so we're going to come here to the six to this section of environment after creating this section i mean after clicking on this section of environment we're going to create a new a new environment for what for inverter track so click on environment and then go ahead and click on this plus okay so give this new environment a name so you can call it inverter track so i can go ahead and say this maybe it's a local environment the one that i'm using when i'm offline so maybe when shall also test the online api we may need to do what to switch it so after doing this after doing this so you see this is a inverter track the local environment uh so the next that we're going to do we're going now to uh to do what to put there our variables see here you can create a variable and you give it what a value so the variable that i'm going to create is url okay or api url you can call it anything that you want so this url so i'll go ahead and cut and copy the other url that we that we're going to use here in this collection and then come to this register i'm going to cut this one here this beginning from this stroke the whole of it and i cut it okay so i'll cut it Control x or Control c okay Control x okay for those who are using Windows that and then come here back to environment and then click on what on uh, on what on um, inverter track local and then come here and put the value so you see i've just created url so i come here and put the value and also put here the value so you see now i have this as a variable so it is http da, 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 ah, api stroke so i put the stroke because i don't want to repeat also the stroke all the time okay so i put this stroke and now this is our variable url you can create as many as many variables in this environment as possible so after creating this environment the next thing is you now have to set it as active because when i'm switching to another project i don't need again to create another environment so we need to create this environment only one time i can switch them when i want so i'll go ahead and switch the environment so set the environment as active you just simply come to the environment that you want and then you click on this tick so by doing like this it will set that environment as active or you can as well come here to this six section and then you switch to the environment that you want you can do any of those two for example if you want to switch this one you'll see it is this one okay so both of them are the same if you want to switch to the one that you want come here and they say invite rock so it means that now the system or this uh, postman is going to use uh this one as a hot as our current environment so i'm going to use now this variable url okay so i'll come here to our what to our to our collections and click on register and then come here so instead of putting auth stroke register i'll just simply come and put these two brackets you open two brackets like this and then close them and in between you put the what uh sorry you open one bracket is it two or one <laughs> i think it's two i think let me move my mouse here yeah it is two so you open two curl brackets and close them and then in between you put the variable you want to reference so if you move your mouse over there it will be able to show you the variable that they have they have replaced there so this one will help us not from from not repeating ourselves again and again and again and again so uh that is how we implement the environment so this is going to do the same job so it means that the other value is just so going to be what to be substituted here the value of the of the route so if i press there you'll see i'm getting the same what the same response this is where you'll be getting the what uh the race pawns all right so after doing that uh the next thing that you have to do uh you may need to set uh your headers and then you say here you should accept okay come here and put click on header and they say come here and say accept so you should accept and then you come and put here this one like this and select this one so there it will be treated like a what like an api request okay 
So that is it. Uh, that is it. Now uh, it means that the next thing that we're going to do now you see I can be able to send. I can be able to get the request. So the next thing that I can uh, that we're going to do is now to create the logic of what of registration. So let's come back now to our project. So it will be very much complicated. It will be very much complicated if we want to create a what if we want to create uh, the logic of. Uh, of what of uh, everything in this one file the routes can be so much too much and uh, our file will start confusing us so it will be smart that if we create a controller or an external controller that we shall be just calling uh, i mean that we shall put there the functions and then we'll be just calling those functions so we know that this one will just be a simple list of our different routes or different endpoints and it will be referencing to functions that are in another file so that our things should look a little bit more organized and avoid creating what uh, chaos or problems so imagine that if i write here now like uh, 30 lines of registration only and now i come to login i create those other 30 lines so it can become so much what so much uh, complicated so what you're going to do you're going to create another file or you're going to create another what you call another controller and then we shall be refreshing from that controller you still put different methods or different functions that will be doing what Dif that will be doing different what different logics so i'll just simply come here to to app then http and then you see controllers so this is a basic controller or an external controller what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste it so I can create mine in the API controller. Copy and paste. So here I have a copy. So I can come and rename it. And then I come and say this one maybe is API controller. So make sure that you begin with a capital letter like you have done. Okay, so copy this name. Okay. And then make sure that name is the name of a what of this class here. Okay. So it is API controller is extending the base API. So inside here, we are going to put, uh, this is just a simple class. You see, this name should be the same as this one. So we're going to put now here our different kind of what? Uh, different kind of logic, okay? So our first function, for example, that we're going to do, we're going to do what we call public function register, okay? So public function register. And then inside this function, I just put maybe time to register from controller like this. So... To make sure that I'm able to connect to this one. So after doing this, so after doing this, after doing this, uh, after doing this controller with this first method, we shall come back to our what? To our API. So instead of writing this function here, I'm going to rub it. Okay. So the first thing that we have done is to put the what? The let me collapse this one. The first thing that we have done is just put the endpoint name. Okay. You can as well remove this auth and put uh register if you want it's okay so i'll just simply come here now we want to refresh this method that i've created in the what in the api controller so what you do you open this uh square bracket in some kind of an array so the first thing that you pass you pass the class so you say api controller like this i hope it's like that one <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. Let me first get from here. Yeah, it's like that. Okay, so you open the bracket and then put uh, two, cl two columns and then put class like this. Okay. So you put the class that you're referencing to, that you're referring to, and then the second, you open comma and put uh, the method that you want in that class, register. So by doing like this, you'll be able to click on this and then go to that method. So by doing like this, you should be able to do what now to call this method when you're registering. Let's test that. I hope, I'm, not, I'm not sure that is working, but that's suppose perfect, you see? Temp register from what? From controller. Okay, so that's how you do. So it means that here you're just going to have our line like these ones, eh? as the method and the logic are being done from what? From another side. 
so if we want to just refresh we just refresh control and click on that and it will do what it will go there so make sure that this uh, api controller is imported here like this in order to work so i hope you can see that uh, that is how we do it that is how uh, we set uh, the endpoint so it means that now anyone wherever they are if they send some data here you shall be able to do what to access that method all right now, now let's do the logic of now registering so i'll just simply press control and go to this what to this method of register so this is the place where we're going to do what the registration so this method it can expect also what you call a request okay so you can just simply put what you call request this request that is coming here from http not this re other request eh? this http request and then put here request so make sure that this is the one that is imported eh? it's not any other thing so this request is the one that is going to be containing the data that is being sent okay so let's say that uh, i want to 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 display someone's name okay i can just simply say die and say maybe hello and then i put okay name like this so it means that this data or the post data that will come will be coming through this what through this request name so if i go ahead and send so you'll see hello but nothing is being displayed because i've not sent the name so if i'm send the name in postman just simply come here to the body okay click body here and then come here on this drop and i say form data okay so this form data will give you a place where you can put name and the value the name and the value so i can just simply put here maybe name okay and then say muhindo mubaraka and then after i say send so when i say send you see hello mohindo baraka so i mean that the data has been received successfully in this request as we expected all right so after doing that now let's go ahead and the uh, and the uh, and start doing the logic aha uh -huh. now if you want to send we want to create a way how we shall be sending back the information so for me i have a way how i could like how I, if i if i want to send back the information how do i want to send it okay so it will be great if we do what we have one way or a standard way of how we send back the information so if it is an error we show someone it's an error if it is a success we show someone it's a what it's a success so since we want to do it in a standard way so it means that it will be better if we create just one method that will be responsible for sending out the responses okay so we're going to create two, two methods one method is going to, to 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 be for success response and then another method will be for the error response okay in case something did not go right so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to put this method in our utilities function our utilities class you see remember we created here our utilities uh utilities utilities eh? utilities uh what utilities class so i'll come here to under models utilities class so in this class we are going to put just two methods one method is going to be for sending the success another method is going to be uh for sending the errors okay so i'm going to put here public static it should be accessed statically uh function and then for example let's begin with that one of of success so i can just simply put maybe success that's what maybe you can call it whoever i can call it you can call it in your own way that you want so open here bracket so uh the first thing that we may need to send okay thing that we may need to send so we may need to send for example uh the the data and the message and and the code okay so that and the message okay that and the message those two things so to do that i'll just simply come and and begin by accepting what so let me explain this let me collapse here so this method will be taking two things so the first thing it will be taking the the data so the data by default will be null uh, and then the second that will be taking it will be taking the message okay the message and then the message will be like uh, the message that uh, someone may need to send back as a custom one as a custom message okay yeah, so there are three two things that we may need to send back okay so 
uh, after here I'll come here and, and say return and then say response and then you say all right let's just do like this all right so I want um, I want the response to be in JSON okay so So you have to write this line, you say header, just write the exactly I've written it, I've written it here, header, content type, and then put application so JSON. So this one will make sure that the response that is being sent back is in what? Is in JSON. So you write this, it's very important. And then after, uh, what we're going to do now is uh, want now to send back the response. Okay, so to send back the response, Uh, so you just simply put uh, JSON encode, or you just simply say return, or you say maybe die JSON encode. Okay, so when you say JSON encode, it's going to encode this data in what into JSON format, and then you say JSON encode, and then you say uh, success, and then you say here success, and I mean status to be success, and then the message to be the message that you've been sending, that you're sending, and then the data as data. Okay, so me, I always use here what you call code. So code will be one. So one will stand for the success, uh, the success of uh, of a what, of the. I mean, the the one will stand that everything is okay. Everything is okay. That will be the response of one. And then this is the message. Just in case you want to send back the message, you'll be passing it in in here. And then this one, the first one will be what? Will be now the data that you're sending back. So if you want to remove the default, you can as well remove the default by just making them compulsory like this. So everyone, someone will be able to send this to every time they send a response. So you can post the video, the, 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 the video and see what I've done. So this is going to be the one that will be sending the success, okay? So I can go ahead and test this one first. So if you want to send back success, so we'll come, we shall come back here to our API controller. If you want to send back success, we shall just simply call um, utils. Okay, so if everything is okay, so I import utils and then I do like this to pass. Okay, so I say pass. Okay, I say utils and then I say success. So just simply put here success. So this first thing you pass the data. Okay, so the data can put maybe an empty array. And then the second thing I can just pass here the message that I want to send back as a message. So this is going to be responsibly, I mean, register successfully, for example. So if you come back this success, you will see it will receive the data and then the response. So this success will do, it will set the, the response to be in JSON format and also the error status code to be 200 and then say JSON encode and then open cal bra I mean open brackets and then inside there put an array. And then the first thing is the code, the code is going to be one. Then the second thing is the message that you've set from wherever you've set it from. And then the third thing is the data, which is the data variable that you're sending back. So if you come back here, we are just sending here the data and like this. So if you come here and uh, try, you'll see our data. Wait. not echoing it so you can just simply say echo instead of return and then die okay so so that the method the system should not go beyond there okay so you just echo this whatever you've converted to json like this and then die now if you try to send back here you'll see that um, when you click on pretty you'll see that um, our response we have it is well organized in json format uh, whereby we have the status as success the data as uh, empty and then the, the the message as user registered successfully so by doing like this we shall be able to do what to know okay 
that now uh, something can be sent back successfully. If you want to access as a row, you'll see there. If you want to access as a preview, you'll see it in that way. So you shall always use this pretty, so you can be able to see the data in well-organized JSON format. So I hope you can see this method properly and understand it is just as simple as that. All right, so with that much said, let's uh, go to another thing. Okay, so we are back here now. Let's go back now to the API and maybe let us also go in ahead and create the, the, the what the the error method in case there is something that is not right. Okay, so let's go ahead and duplicate this one of success. Just going to look like the same. So you just duplicate success. Okay, so we put here error. Okay, so error, should we send back some data if there's an error? I don't know. Should we send back the data? So it is up to you. You may either decide to be sending back the data or, but in most cases for me, I don't send back the data when there's an error. So let me just send error and then I'll just be sending back the message. Okay, so the response is going to be the same, everything the same. Even here, I can not, I may, I may leave it like this. And then here, I remove the data variable and then I just send here. So the status, I mean the code, sorry, here may I use codes. <laughs> I use code instead of status, but for you can use anything that you want. So the code is one. Now here, my code is going to be zero. So when you shall see the code of zero, just know that something did not go right. Okay, so like this hope you can see that so let me go ahead and copy this and then we try to test it so if you come here to api okay come back to api so we have already tested the success when you test the success you'll see that the code is one and the data is there and there is no what there's no response all right so uh let's go ahead and test uh Let's go ahead and test the success, the error. So the error will be, we just remove this. The error does not access, does not accept this one. We just, it just take the message, okay? Maybe I can say maybe something went wrong. It's uh, something like this. So here it's when I'm calling the error response, okay? The one that is responding the error. So I can maybe put here data and make it null, something like this. Just as a press hold. All right. So let's go ahead and test the error. So here in the register, we're sending back that something went wrong. So if you try to test the error, you'll see that the code is zero and that is null and then something went wrong. So everything is now fine. At least we have now said the what? Uh, the basics. So let's now start creating the registration. Uh, what? The registration logic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we begin, we begin, we begin, we begin, we begin, <laughs> we begin, okay? Uh, so let's begin, I don't know even where to start from. Okay, let's begin. Uh-huh. So let's begin by, so we are going to need two things here. So if someone is creating an account, is when someone is creating an account, we shall need two things. Um... We shall need uh, the what the um, the user information and also we shall need the company information. Okay, so those are the two things that we shall need uh, for when someone is doing what when someone is creating uh, the company. Okay, so we shall need those two things. So we shall make sure that someone is uh, has provided his user information, create his account, and then after. We go ahead and create the what the company uh, information. All right, so let's go ahead and do these uh, things. Okay, so we're going to begin by expecting the, the user information. So let's go back to our localhost and see which table, which records that we need uh, for the user. Okay. So in coming at inverter track. So 
So an admin users, let me collapse this. So I'm going to copy this column that we need here on top. I'll just copy them. And then I'm going to create a, a comment block comment and I put them here. So these are the columns that we're going to need when you're doing what? When you're creating the user. So that is it for this lecture. Let's meet in the next lecture where we're going now to work with what? With the registration. Don't miss the next lecture.